Okay, it's called Information Juliet. Let's see what runway they're landing on, what the winds are, and the altimeter. So I can call this guy up. We're five miles west of the airport, and I'll tell him we have Information Juliet and we want to land, right? Because that's what we want to do. Okay, right base for uh, three three Delta. We'll do it next. I got to make a phone call here. We got to go ahead and check the ATIS because we're coming up to Payne Field again. So I need to listen to this and see which runways they're landing on. Okay, it's called Information Juliet. Let's see what runway they're landing on, what the winds are, and the altimeters. 2353 Zulu, weather, wind 2307, visibility 10, sky clear, temperature 22 2.9er. Okay, so by listening to that, Information Juliet, so I can call this guy up, we're five miles west of the airport, and I'll tell him we have Information Juliet and we want to land, right, because that's what we want to do. We're going to tell him who we are, where we are, what we want to do, so let's try it. Payne Tower, System 9533 Delta 5 West inbound for landing with Juliet. This is 9533 Delta, Payne Tower, you just overused the space this time? That's firm. Roger, enter midfield right now, wind runway 16 right, report mid channel. Midfield downwind 1 6 right, mid channel uh, 33 Delta. Okay, so Useless Bay, he was asking if I was over Useless Bay, and that's the name of this area that I'm at right here. And so what he's asked me to do is he's asked me to enter on a downwind for runway 16 right. Well, you look at runway 16 right. What's 16 right mean? There's two runways at Payne Field. They're north and south. Runway 16 is actually the heading, runway heading. When you say 16, add a zero to it, 160. What's that? It's a magnetic heading, isn't it? So the heading's roughly 160, which is south. South is 180, 180 heading. So 160 is 20 degrees left of, of true south, or south. Uh, 340 is the north runway, going to the north. And so you think runway, they're not going to call it runway 340. And it's always not always 340. It might be like what, 343. That's why they round it off. So instead of seeing a runway called, you're clear to land on runway 343, they're just going to knock the three off, round it off to the lowest denominator and call it runway 34. So in this case, we're landing on runway 16 right. There's two parallel runways, 16 right, 16 left. We're coming in from the west, so we're going to land on 16 right. Right base, enter your phone at Cherokee, uh, midfield right now in this time. Okay, right base for 3-3 uh, Delta, we'll do that. Okay, so anyhow, we're going into 16 right. So 16 right's the runway that's going to be closest to the west side. So then he's, what he's asked us to do is to enter on a base leg. Downwind is a beam the runway. Base leg is 90 degrees to the final approach, approach course. So downwind leg would be opposite of the landing direction. So if you're landing to the south, the downwind would be to the north. The base leg, base leg is downwind, base turn, and final. So what the controllers asked me to do is aim for and report the base leg. So we're aiming for that right now. That's the 33 Delta. Cherokee, you're following uh, about a quarter mile south of uh, Muckle Teal, 1,400 along the shoreline. Okay, 33 Delta, over there. Okay, so we're looking for some traffic out here. I don't see this guy anywhere. There's a reporting point down here where he said we're looking. And so anyhow, preparing for landing, I'm looking at the mixtures, rich fuel sectors on both. There's still negative contact for 33 Delta. Roger, sir. He's uh, just over Muckle Teal now in the base entry. At your 12 o'clock, two miles. Uh, on the base over Muckle Teal, spacing should look good. Okay. Uh, head over Muckle Teal, 33 Delta. Okay, so what he's asked us to do, there's another airplane out here flying around.
And again, it's visual, so I need to find him with my eyes. I can't just rely on this guy. I can ask him where he's at, this tower controller, because he's cleared this guy into his airspace. But he's told us to report this thing called Mukultio, which is a ferry dock down here. Mukultio. A lot of Indian names up here. Three, three, delta. They're just uh, wing high base, the final one mile final. Runway 16 right, clear to land number two. Clear to land number two, 16 right, 33 three, delta. Okay, so he's cleared us to land on runway 16 right, and we're number two. What's number two? Means we're the second guy clear to land. There's a guy in front of us. So I'm starting down, so what am I doing? Am I pushing forward on the control wheel to get the plane down? Nah, I've just slowly been reducing the throttle, slowly pulling the power out. So there's 1,600 feet. Remember, pattern altitude is 1,000 feet above the airport. So I'm at 1,000 feet above the airport. Airport elevation is 600 feet. I'm at 1,600 feet. So we're coming down here, and again, the runway's over here, but I'm still looking down there to make sure that nobody's coming in on that final approach. They shouldn't be because he hasn't cleared them into the area, but doesn't mean that they're not going to be there. You, you always have to just vigilant of everything going on here. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to start slowing down to go down. So I'm pulling the throttle back. I'm maintaining 1,600 feet right now because I want the airspeed to slow down. I need to get into the top of this white arc, remember? Top of the white arc is where I can put the first 10 degrees of flaps in. There's the 85 knots. Now I'm going to start coming down. So I just pull the throttle back, slow the airplane down and then start coming down. Looking out behind me, no one behind me, which is good. This is where they build all the Boeing 747s, 777s, and 787. So, so I'm just out here kind of lingering around at about 75 knots. It doesn't sound like there's anybody behind me. Uh, 80, 80 knots out here, 75 knots is fine. You're on a big runway, there's going to be a lot of guys. When you're on the short runways, you have a tendency to maybe fly just a little bit slower. Your instructor will explain how all that works because you you really have to mesh with the other airplanes that are flying in the pattern. Um, there's another thing. We have a control tower at this airport. A lot of airports don't have control towers. Those are called uncontrolled fields where you're doing a lot more talking on the radio to other airplanes in the sky. Flying into a controlled airport, that tower guy in the tower is telling me what to do, where to land, what runway to land, what sequence to land. So anyhow, coming down, it's a big, long runway, but I'm, okay, I'm doing about 80 knots. I'm going to start slowing it down. So I'm going to go ahead and pull some power out. Pulling power out means reducing engine RPM. That's all that means. Technic technically sounds cool, but okay. So now I'm going to go to flaps 20 degrees. So I have 20 degrees of flaps. Now I'm going to maintain about 70 knots. I'm only about a quarter mile final approach, 100 feet above the runway. Now I'll go to full flaps, and I'm going to start slowing from 70 knots down to about 60 knots. Coming down, and as I come down, I'm going to start pulling back on the control wheel to reduce the rate of descent. I want to get that nose to come up, and how you do that is pull the nose up with the control wheel, up, 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 and then pull the power out, and there's the landing. That's how that works. Come down, and that's called the flare. That's called the flare, and then there's the touchdown. So then, when you're slowing down on the runway, slow down on the center line before you make the turn off to the taxiway. Don't veer off the center line. It's just professional. And I'm clearing the runway. Do I need to wait for the tower guy to tell me to switch frequencies? No. Otherwise, you might sit here all day long. And he hasn't told me to switch, so I'm just going to go ahead and switch frequencies. And uh, ground system 9533 Delta Alpha 2 to Central Parking. There's 9533 Delta, Spain Ground, Tech Central, the Alpha Delta. Alpha Delta, 33 Delta. Okay, there's that sneaky Alpha Delta Tech Talk again. Okay, so we're clear of the runway. Once we're clear of the runway, then the landing lights come off, then the taxi lights come off, and then the flaps come up. Have you ever been to a major airport and noticed any big airliner turn off the runway with their flaps up? Nope, they wait till they're off the runway. Why is that? Because you don't want to start grabbing handles when you're on a runway. Okay, here's a taxi. I just want to turn around and make sure that no one's there. Okay, we have no wind taxiing back in. There's no wind really today. Five knots, eh, you don't need to worry about it. But again, I do have a tendency to pull back on that nose wheel 
back on the controls just to get the nose up in the air. And why? It just gets that prop off. And it seems like I can go a little bit faster in taxiing speed by having that lifted up. But when you're just steering with rudder alone, using no differential brake, you get about 10 degrees of steering on either side. And you'll see that when you're trying to make tight turns, you, you're going to have to apply the brake. And that's something that just takes time. It, it, you figure it out pretty quick. Nothing secret there. So anyhow, we're clear of the runway, so I've got everything good doing the after landing checks. I still have the beacon on. That's the red beacon on the tail because that means, hey, we're out here flying around or, you know, taxiing around. My flaps are up. My trim is reset for the next departure. And there's an intersection, so I'm looking there and looking there. And I'm going uphill, so I'm having to add a little bit of extra power, but this hill's going to crest right here, this taxiway. So I can tell already I'm coming up to where I'm going to be turning because he cleared me via taxiway alpha and then taxiway delta. So A, A is alpha, D is delta, right? So I'm an alpha right now. Well, here comes taxiway delta. So I'm going to pull the power out. So what do you do? You could either hit both brakes or pull the power out. What do you think makes more sense? What do you think is going to wear the brakes out? So let's see if we can make this turn just with rudder alone. Yeah, we can. A little bit wide. A little bit wide. Oh, you know, I, I had to add, I just gave it a touch of brake to get, to get around that corner. But again, in taxiing, there was enough inertia to get the airplane around the corner when you're on taxiways straight 90 degrees. It's when you're in tight areas that you ha almost have to bring the airplane to a stop. And then if it's a right turn, you'll go full right rudder and f step on the right brake. Just go ahead and push it all the way down. And then you're going to have to add power. Add power to get it to spin around. We're coming up to the parking area again. Now we're starting to get into an airplane where there's or an area where there's a lot of airplanes parked. So my speed is reduced at least by half. Now am I going a, a fast paced walk? Yeah, pretty much. And some of these areas when they're rough, not all taxiways are nice created equal. They're not nice and smooth. This one has some bumps in it. So again, I just pull back on that control wheel just to keep the nose, the propeller higher off the ground. Uh, in hopes that I'm not hitting anything, you know, it's just less of a chance to pick up some st uh, rocks and such. So anyhow, and again, we're around this area, man, I'm just watching out for one because there's hangers up here and those planes can come zinging out. Because there are guys, again, like I said, they, they get their license and they become cavalier and they think they know everything and they think they can go do whatever they want. And those are the guys a lot of times that kill themselves. Usually when that happens, uh, it's weather related. So. When you do get your pilot's license, they talk about defining your minimums. The legal minimums for a VFR pilot are 1,000 feet overcast and three miles visibility. I highly recommend giving yourself 5,000 overcast and 10 miles visibility because if you go up with your instructor and see what, what three miles of visibility looks like in an area that you don't know, you're, you're gonna know the area of right around your airport. But you're not going to know the area when you start doing your cross country. So please give yourself some room to maneuver in there. And that's in terms of higher cloud height and visibility. Again, the, the VFR minimums, visual flight rule minimums are 1,003. 1,000 foot overcast, 3 miles visibility. But go ahead and crank that up for your first, first, first couple uh, cross countries and I'm sure that your instructor will insist on that as well because that's just a big thing. You don't want to go out there when it's crappy weather and get lost. It's scary. Again, you're going to have a blast with this training but respect it. If you respect it and you approach it professionally then you're going to have nothing but fun with it and uh, I wish you the best. I mean it's been, I'm really, had a, really glad we had a chance to fly together. Uh, it's been fun. I could have kept going on and on and on, but uh, again, now we're coming back into the parking area, and I'm just making sure that everything's looking clear, looking clear, looking clear. So that's pretty much it for now. We're going to go ahead and shut her down. And you guys know that if you have any questions, Go ahead and email me because that's why I'm here, you know, but uh, have fun with it. I know you're going to have a blast and uh, shoot me an email. Let me know how it's going. I love to hear that stuff. It really entertains me when I'm on the road. It gives me something to read that's uh, that's happy stuff instead of your standard uh, airline emails. <laughs> so anyhow, have fun. Take care. I hope you enjoy the lesson. See you later.